Welcome to Two Guys One Anime. I'm Ashuri. My name is the Holy Apple. And today we will be reviewing uh, Ghost in a Shell or Ghost in the Shell. Sorry, he had one sorry, job. <laughs> I always call it Ghost in 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 a Shell, and I don't know why. And it's Ghost, Ghost in, in the, the Shell. shell. Um, yes. And it is the classic 1995, the original, the first film that we're talking about, not the series or the second film. We might get to that because you plan on watching all of them anyway, didn't you? Yeah, I plan on watching the entire series, but for now, just the classic 1995 cut. Yeah, because I want to maybe watch the second. I don't know about the series. I might watch the second film, but anyway. Um, watch it in order. There we go. Yeah, so we're going to be giving our thoughts and opinions. Um Hopefully you don't batter us in the comments. Uh, Please batter us in the comments. I want to see it. No. And also, <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to speak for you on this, but pronunciation of names is always a bad thing for me. So, um, please don't kill me. I, I really don't mean to. Now, the fantastic thing about this is I've written no names down. <laughs> I've got the names. Well, I've got some of the names. Um, yeah, it's not great. I just have references to people. I don't have the names for yeah. this reason. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm, of... I'm going to describe them enough that you'll know who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there is that. Um... So... Film was released in 1995, as we've already gone over, mm -hmm. and it was directed by Mamori Oshi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Someone's gonna rip you to pieces. I know, I know. <laughs> I feel so bad. <laughs> I said it's a neo noir cyberpunk thriller. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that one. Yes. Um, it is set in Japan in 2029, which isn't that long for us yeah just give it another seven years and we'll have kind of androids worrying. running around yeah, in japan kind of worrying <laughs> you've seen the tech they've got in japan yeah, it might actually well, happen japan might already have it they're just keeping it secret there is um, that as well <laughs> <laughs> and i'm gonna butcher this name uh the main story is about major motoko kusanaki yeah close enough i think <laughs> and <laughs> I don't think you can call it a she, can you? I suppose it is a she. Yeah, go with a she because it's uh, modelled after a woman. She is chasing a mysterious hacker known as the Puppet Master. Is Le Puppet. Yeah, the main premise of the film, shall we say. So, first impressions for me. Uh, I have actually written down like notes on how different bits of the film are, but like I've actually done like an opening statement as well, so this will okay. be quite good. Okay. Uh, I basically said overall it's a good film, but because it's from 1995, I am going to be cutting it a little bit of slack because obviously in today's day and age, animes come on leaps and bounds. Yeah. Like you think Jujutsu Kaisen and things like that, and it's just off the chain in compa in like comparison to this. So yeah. I will cut it some slack. So yes. despite it being from 1995, the animation was actually really impressive and it has aged well. Yeah. So but it's not even the art style. I remember speaking to you about it. Like, It might look old and unfortunately I've had to watch the English dub of it. But despite it looking old, I'm not sure if it's by design or if it's just because it looks old. Because the animation is a bit clunky, it gives off the impression that these genuinely are robots. And it's like, I don't know if this is by design or if this is actually I mean, like because of the time. Yeah, I mean, voice acting voice acting on our side, so dubs. Yeah, have English come, dub. I've come a long way as well. Yes. Um, because there are some absolute classics from the 80s and 90s that <laughs> yes. are questionable. Um <laughs> So there is. Oh, your base number long to us yeah. is a good example. See, I see like you. So you've watched it as dubbed. I've watched it as subbed. Every, yes. Every time I've watched it as subbed. Um. So, yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's just it's very hard to get your head around 
when you consider that like the computers that they made this on because i believe there is cg in this film mm, i don't know i believe that know. this has used cg in fact i maybe should correct myself uh yes it does use computer graphics very good. It's a, it is a combination of cell animation, which is the classic way of doing it, and computer graphics. So that's good to Correct. reference, Bottom. basically. So I was right. So, yeah, like I said, it's hard to believe because, I mean, I was born in 94. So I was a year old. and uh, know, 93 for me. Yeah, to know that a computer <laughs> was able to make what that made must have been unbelievable at its time. Yeah, because I... Like... When you look back on it in the same kind of era, you have to think of like the original Dragon Ball kind of thing. Mm. Like how old that looks if you go back and watch it. Well, that's because it's all cells. Yeah. That's that's why. They didn't use... Yeah, it's all CG. Whereas I think Ghost in the Shell had the budget to actually go... Do, yeah, we'll yeah. use... Because I believe it did take a fair few years for them to make as well. Um, it wouldn't surprise me yeah, being at that old. So, I know, But at the same time, I think the computer graphics side of it did speed up a lot so i was gonna say now that you actually mentioned that it does make a lot of sense because i was going to comment on the fact that i felt like there could have been more in the film but now that you mentioned the cell like they've had to animate it from cells mm. it does make a lot more sense while the movie would feel slower compared to yeah. modern day stuff so yeah. That does make sense. I will withdraw that statement later on <laughs> <laughs> withdraw that statement. <laughs> yeah there's there's no uh, that, that statement's not invalid because mm. of the animation style in the past. That, yeah. That's fine. Uh, carry on with your opening statement, as you put it. Don't want to now. <laughs> 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 no, so another good thing I really liked about it was it feels really cryptic throughout the entire film. Like, it's, I'll, have to, I'll explain more about that as I go through, but it's not your typical oh here is protagonist the protagonist is the good guy the protagonist can beat everybody up and they beat the bad guy at the end of the day <laughs> it's not your typical movie it's very mysterious in how it works and it's got like extra keys and things that you'll only pick up on if you go through it like a second time or a third time mm. it's like if you're watching it blind first time then you'll have no idea what's going on and it's quite good like that mm. So yeah, it's it's the same. It's I I get the feeling that it's I get the feeling that the film was more sort of designed or wrote to be sort of not live action or well yeah kind of more live action than actually an anime if that makes sense like it it it's got a, a more of a film story than just like your typical. And any anime series, like you just like you said, you just go. There's a good guy. There's a bad guy. That good guy's really strong. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Or that good guy's yeah. really smart, and it's fine. Don't worry about it. There's a little bit more in depth going on. Um, yeah, there's which, a sense of like realism about it, yeah. despite it's being anime, which is yeah. weird to say actually. <laughs> which yeah, it's just it's it's just a a big reason why it's one of my favorites personally. It's just yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. I was like, something I was going to point out, like, I guess it's going like further in now, but an example of where they go into like the difference between watching it the first time and it being really cryptic and the second time coming around and you kind of get what's going on. Mm. A very good example is with the trash collectors. Yeah. When, because basically, originally, when you first watch it, it genuinely just looks like you're just going along as a day as a trash collector and they're just basically shooting the wind or whatever and just talking about random nonsense yeah. like they would as a, as a garbage collector in the first place. But it's like even when he's like showing pictures of his daughter and yeah. it's like, you just normal. It just looks normal at that point. And then it gets to the interrogation bit and it's just kind of like, <laughs> okay, what the fuck? Yeah, he, goes, <laughs> he pulls out the same picture because you don't get to see it. But like yeah. you said, it's like your brain's just thinking, oh, it's just a it's just a whatever detail. It doesn't matter. And then he pulls yeah. out a picture. He's like, look, here's my daughter and my wife. And it's just a picture of him. It's like... Yes, him oh. and his dog, I think it is. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, God. Okay, there's a little bit more going on here. Yeah, that, it's that, like a brain hack. Uh, you bringing that scene nubs. up is a really good point because that scene is literally one of the, my favourite scenes in that entire film. 
Yeah, it's it adds and, to the crypticness yeah, of the whole the, film. The, the animation on that is just unbelievable, especially the the fight in the water. The fight in the water yeah. is really good. Yes, that was that it's... was so going towards the live action. Uh, that was one of the scenes that I think they really like tried to nail because mm. it was like quite a, because it was quite big in the original film. Uh, yeah, they was like, oh, yeah, we really need to get this right, and I think they kind of fucked up on that bit if i'm honest it's <laughs> live action good. of course they're gonna yeah, fuck it up didn't, on it. <laughs> it, didn't look, it didn't look it it looked like it just wasn't what it should have been like mm. the, the, the the thing was like a 1995 animation get a better yes. job of showing it then i don't even know when that live action came out but it, it wasn't that long ago i've got to say but that that's the thing really though it's like Despite it being from 1995, it's held really well through the years. Mm. There's, there's quite a few movies that have done that. You think Studio Gilby, for, exact, for example. Yeah, so I'd many. actually hold them. I'd hold Ghost in the Shell up with Studio Gilby in yeah. that kind of scenario. Yeah, yeah I think but that's... Going back to... Yeah, I think that's why it's got such a cult following as well. Yes, it's... there's no wonder why. Yeah. But uh, going back to the... Um... The trash collector scene. I'm trying not to get too ahead. I want to, like, go through the scene as yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, Going back to the trash collectors, it's kind of like another thing I picked up on because I told you obviously I watched it through twice because God forbid I fell asleep towards the end like a loony. Um, so the first time round when I watched it, it all seemed natural like they were shooting the wind. But the second time I watched it and I knew what was going to happen, I couldn't help but notice that again because it's from 1995, the guy who has been affected by the brain hack, he seems really clunky in his animation and robotic, and it's kind of like. I'm wondering now if that's actually by design or if that is genuinely 1995. Because <laughs> um, it's really strange to watch back. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. It, I mean, I it, it could have been. I mean, it's probably it's probably just clunky because it's 1995. Um, but but... So it is that, but it's like, if it is just because it's 1995, fair enough, it's a nice touch for it to be modern yeah. day because it kind of works. It's like... I think I, it, could, I, it could be a happy action. It's kind of like with um yeah. Toriyama when it came to making Super Saiyan, for example. Yeah, it's, it's a happy accident. Happy, <laughs> a happy accident. Um, if, if that's yeah, a thing. I mean, it could be. I, again, that's like it's. I don't think there's a defined, definitive, a definitive answer towards that. I think it's like more of an opinion thing. Like Maybe. you can you yeah. can think one or the other. Like you can just look at it and go, oh, it looks really rubbish because it looks clunky," or you can be like. Ah, but he is a robot. It's like yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Mm. Uh, if it if they were completely human, then I might be like, it's not an i five. I can cut slack. But now it's like, is this a feature? Because they are actually robots. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't yes. know. That's a uh, tops and tail. Ah, there's an idea. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> yeah, let us know in the comments what you think. Is it is it clunky because it's 1995, or is it clunky because it's cyborgs and robots and stuff? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows the answer? No one. <laughs> no one has a correct answer. You have actually, opinions. There, there might actually be an interview or something out there that... Possibly, if someone it. can find it, yeah. Yeah, if someone Never has that. that information, let us know. I'm actually very interested to know. Yeah, if it is. If, it, if it's out there, fantastic. It could have just been the limitations uh, of what they had that yeah, stopped but, them. But it is what it is. It is so, what it is. Moving through the scenes, obviously, they had the chase scene with the market stalls. And I just, I need to comment something here, right? Mm. Why is it in 2029, everything is a slum? <laughs> because, uh, right. is, there, yeah, is there an explanation? I think it's, so the idea, because it's the same as like Blade Runner, because that's obviously like the cyberpunk sort of thing, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That when, what, they, what they're trying to point at is once robots or machines start taking the jobs of normal people mm. it becomes the point where them normal people aren't going to have work so, so everyone goes into poverty basically so you get a large majority a large section of your work or the workforce of a country say will end up with nothing to do so mm. they go like you said they go to poverty 
and then the the, the basically the divide between rich and poor just widens because the rich people have just employed machines that are one working non-stop two they don't you know they're not going to complain about wages there's no wages or any of that crap so it's just that like they just continue to work so the richer will just keep getting rich and the poor with no jobs they just basically done. die off yeah they've got nothing to do so that's like like that, I said, that's okay, why you end sense. up with slums and then in the distance because i think there's a scene where she's in the harbour and she's like diving there is that and yeah. then there's also the scene at the end with the fight in the war there's a big sea at the back yeah. in there so that you've got the yeah. city in the background that's like really tall in terms of skyscrapers and stuff which is obviously yeah. trying to show because i actually i think in the water fight there's a city in the background if that's I'm correct. what i just said yeah that's what I just said, yes. Or is it? Is it? Or is yeah. it, are they old buildings? I can't remember. No, it's like a big city. I'm going to have to Google it. I've got to Google it. Yes, you are correct. But actually, there is a, there are slums in front of it. So there's more like, slums in front of it? There's a row of slums in front of it that look like they're not, live, like they're not being lived in. Mm. And then you've got all the new city behind it, which again is like what we've said is you've got the poor. The divide, yeah. And then the straight up over the top of it so it's yeah yes you make a point but either way that is why it is so anyway with the slums now out of the way um hmm. i'm trying to catch up where i am so the combat scenes i like the chase scene in the market yes. because it's it's not a classic chase scene is it really it's not no oh the protagonist can catch up to the the villain villains throwing fruit and carts and everything behind mm. them to slow him down it's literally just a straight sprint after him yeah and they still can't catch him and uh, one of the like pieces of the text i also like in the whole thing as well is the invisible cloak that he has yeah but yeah, it's good with with the invisible cloak i have one massive grievance with the anime <laughs> and that is why does the mage's invisibility have to have her be nude? <laughs> well, she's nude anyway. Well, it's like a, it's like a it's like um. Well, she hasn't got any. You know, she's not got anything anyway. So I know, the, but so uh, the why? Shell, if you like, it's just it's just whatever, isn't it? It's just it's just. I like know, but solid it's just, suit. It, but. I suppose it bothers me because it just kind of, like from me looking at the film for the first time, it looks it, like it's an excuse to throw off nudity. It can just be that. That's that's what I can see it. Yeah. That's because I'm I'm thinking about it. It's like yeah, fair enough. It's a ghost. It's a shell. That that I understand. But you could have literally just got away with making a skin tight a skin tight suit that goes invisible that covers the entire body. That would have the same effect. Yeah, because the idea of her invincibility is that it's built into the suit, isn't it? As well. Yeah, it's built into a skin. Yeah. Like, so it's. That's a... yeah, I can understand I, the technology, I, I, but I, I don't get, understand the design. It, it, is probably, it probably is Japan being Japan, because mm. they do that in a lot of anime. Fine. Um, but like, like we said, I mean, we're 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 saying that it's a she because it's. Modelled after a woman, yeah. Model after the woman and all that, right? But it's not. Yeah, it's an it, android it is, robot at the end of the day. An, it is an it. It's, you know, it's got no gender, so it's... <laughs> it's nothing different from the dolls on the market. <laughs> yeah, basically. So it's, so well, it's... quite a bit different, but besides the point. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's basically, you know, she, she's not a she, it's just whatever. Um... Mm. It's only the consciousness of what it's her that makes it a her. Like you said, the bo the body shape doesn't actually matter because, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna jump ahead quickly, but even the puppet master you would say is a man. Yeah, because the ends voice up in a, in, ends up in a go, uh, in a female ghost, uh, a female shell's body. Yeah. So it's kind of like it doesn't really relate, but I, I get what you're saying with the whole. <laughs> It it just doesn't make sense to me, but yeah, uh, I, I'm not gonna like rip it apart for being no, one no, design. No, it, I mean, <laughs> it's like it's just odd to me that they chose that. Mm. But that's that's literally just all I have. That 
in terms of grievances, that's the only one I have. That's um, at the entire film, that's all you can go off of a go. That's the only bad thing I can say <laughs> about the anime is that you could have done the entire invisibility thing with a skin tighter suit and it probably would have worked better. <laughs> that's the only thing I could say. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else is quite good. Mm. But obviously I'm not done yet. Um the fight scenes we did mention earlier. Uh they are beautiful. I think the water physics are behind yeah. the fight actually are quite good as well for yeah. considering it's nineteen ninety five. Yeah, definitely. But, it does make me laugh, though. Um, just, like, the overwhelming force the Major has in any one-to-one combat. It's like, even though she's not overpowered to hell, she will still kick the ass out of anybody yeah, in a one-to-one hand-to-hand combat. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I think... It's... Not... It's not... Her, she's, she, I mean, she is strong. There is that, because she's not human. So she's not limited by that um there are some limitations to her body which we'll get to at some point um but she's there's obviously so with the shells and with the ghosts the ghost is literally like a thing that can be transferred from shell to shell yes so which is also i think what what would make (laughs) what would make someone stronger in that essence is the fact that i can't get hurt can sometimes yeah they like... don't necessarily feel pain do they no so there's there's that of just like i'm not going to get hurt in this if i can rip all my limbs off i'm not going to feel it it doesn't matter so i'll just keep going and that, mm. that can add to a strength of a character as well as just a natural strength of just being it's fearlessness in it it's like yeah oh the guy can shoot me it doesn't matter i'll just keep going yeah and it's like okay fair enough it's like the void of that humanity kind of thing, which does yeah. make it a little bit more terrifying in a sense. But... Yes. Yeah. Either way. Right, moving on to the Puppet Master. Hmm. Overall, he's a very strange character. Yeah. Okay, well, he, she, or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> sentient let's, being. We'll go with sentient with, being. No, let's go with he, and we'll call Major She, just because it's just easier continuity. to reference it. And also, it does actually make sense later on in the film. Yes. Technically, yes. But anyway, the the concept of the puppet master is really odd to me because at the start you don't know anything about it; you just know the name. Mm. It's like it's some kind of hacker out there in the world. They openly acknowledge that they don't know if it's a man, woman, or if it's some kind of robot or whatever. They just don't know. Mm-hmm. But when you actually find out what it is, and it's like a sentient being that lives inside a code, it's kind of mind-boggling to think that he just randomly popped into existence one day. <laughs> yeah, because he he does explain that is how he came to be. Yes, but yeah, he's he's. I'd I'd imagine that he's been made, and then he's got out of yes. control. More is more like a realistic thing. But like you said, he's such a strange. Like he doesn't give you that much information in no. te- in terms of who he actually is, which is yeah, I think, he... what adds to it. It adds to the cryptiness of the whole film yeah. as well. Um. Yeah, he's he's, he's, a, he's a weird Donny. He is a weird. He's donny. A very weird person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the puppet master though, it's like he, he again. He, it, it's hard to describe. It's like you have the movie that's cryptic, but then you have the puppet master who makes it even more cryptic just by how he talks, and how he conducts himself. Yes, it is literally a he, case of it's like nothing he said is simple. Yeah, it's like it's, he's talking in riddles. Yeah, he's like the Riddler from Batman. Well, yeah. <laughs> in a riddle form. <laughs> yeah. He's like, nothing he says makes sense until you think about it. Mm. Um, when he started dropping hints about him being like this um, military project or whatever, then it started making a little more sense. Mm. But the one thing, I think I said this to you as well, like when I watched the film first time around, I was really impressed with the human police officer yes. and how he somehow managed to think ahead of everybody else despite the fact that they're androids and robots yeah because he's the only one who picked up on um the robotics suits going through and like how heavy the cars were and the pressure plates yeah that was it's like a really good touch as well with the the doors like he's like oh it's, it should shut straight away and he's like mm. how many people walk through the door and it's like oh it's only two he's like no he goes there's more mm. it's like the fact that 
he picked that up when he'd only been in the job for like so long as well. Was yeah. Just yeah, on on point. I think his name was. Yeah, I think it's Togisa. Togisa, yeah. Yeah. Does it ring a bell? Yes. I just yes, refer to yes. him as a police officer because that's basically what it was. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's Togusa. Okay. Yeah, and then even when you think about, like, when the Puppet Master goes on his little rant or whatever you want to call it, um, and he actually ends up escaping, mm. it's actually the police officer who's putting, like, the main work in because he fires off the six rounds at the car and then he shoots it with a tracking dot. Yeah. And it's like, if he didn't do that, none of the rest of the film would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he's literally carrying like, the is, film at that point. <laughs> it, this is literally a full human person as opposed to yeah. anybody with a cybernetic like modification. It's yeah. just it, it does it's a weird kind of revelation sort of thing. Yeah, it's but it, anyway. It, it, I think it's maybe the film's got a, a, a bigger message of you can have all the machines that you want, but humans can still do certain things better. Yeah, it's possible. Which? Uh, I mean, even the Major mentions it herself in the film, doesn't she? It's like, when the police officer, Togasa even, uh, is talking about like why he was picked for the squad, yeah. he, Major literally just lists off a bunch of reasons why. Like, yeah, he's a family she... man, a police yeah, officer he's, he's with... he's more models. trustworthy. It's like... Yeah, he's a trustworthy person, yeah. and he's good at his job, so yeah. it makes sense. And I think it goes back to what we said about the fearlessness as well. He has something to lose. So yeah, because he's a family man. Yeah, so it's you know it it they have they ha in in a weird way they have that control over him if he does do something wrong or tries yeah. to do something wrong. Obviously, he's not because like you said, he's a family man and and it, like she said, he's like sort of trustworthy and mm. he's just good at what he does, which is yeah, it's it, I mean he proves that like you said at the towards the end of the film. So um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's kind of interesting that they they push, they basically made the the human character like one of the most needed. Yeah, he uh, was pivotal for a lot of things yeah. in that film. So, which yeah. was to be honest, I think all the characters are quite pivotal in the film. Mm. Thinking about it, it's like oh, I can't remember his name, but the big guy with the goggles, he Batu. plays a lot of major roles. Batu. Mandu, Batu, thank you. B a t o u, Batu. Batu. Okay, yeah. So yeah, Batu plays loads of key roles in the film. Um, the Major does, and obviously Togusa does as well. Hmm. I don't think like the movie could have been made without the three of them as a whole. The old guy, you could sub him for pretty much anybody. <laughs> he's just there for context, yeah, he's I like suppose. A, he's like a chief, in he, or something like that. Yeah. Kind of thing, so, it's, um, so he's not really much to no. like worry about. No, not too much. But it's, So um, anyway. Yeah. So another perspective I'm going to take on this movie as well is that as opposed to every other anime that you can think of that's got action in it, it's not people relentlessly running forward. Like Even though they are androids and they have nothing to fear in terms of damage, mm. they're all really cautious about how they do things. Yes, so like, the, the consciousness is still there of a human, isn't it? Like, yes. Like the, the, so the ghost, as they put it. Um, it's still basically human minded. Um, yeah. So it's like when they're doing the chase scene and eventually the fight scene, everything that's choreographed in that part is they are always cons like, they're not running at this guy like a lunatic. So like they know they're androids and they can just go up and smash him to pieces. Mm. Like they are taking up stra strategic positions yeah. and like trying to be wary of the surroundings at the same time. Yeah. And they show this later on in the film as well. Like I will get to the, like, uh, like they're towards the end of the film, but yeah. it's like it's shown throughout that they are wary and they're not just relentless in what they do, which is yeah, they, another good touch. I think I think the thing is that they can be relentless, but of the human the human brain is obviously super powerful in the 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 sense that I'd imagine that if it was to put be put into like say another sh like a, a fake body like a shell. Yes, the brain would still be like, I need to be careful. Mm. Like it's just instinct, isn't yeah, it? At that point, I, I really don't want to get shot because this is going to hurt. Whereas, even if, though you don't have pain receptors, yeah, if, and, the, yeah. if the human brain could work its way over that, 
it's not a problem but it's it's not gonna it's it's still always going to be in the back of the mind so um yeah and i think that's what kind of makes major a little bit more scary because i think she can put it to the back of her mind sort of thing like she she knows yes. that she's not human like it's the it's like the scene on the boat she makes that point of she she understands that she's not but she's trying to work out why and how it came about kind of thing yeah she's becoming like semi i suppose semi sentient if you want to call it that yeah at that point but um, no another good example is not just the boat it's when um they're chasing down the puppet master when he's been hijacked mm. and she gets to the land tank bit and she actually has like the fight with the land tank yeah it's a good so thing. yeah it's like even though she she knows she's not human and it's good to see that they're not behemoths of robots that can just do anything yeah it's like when she's trying to rip off the lid of the land tank she just yeah. rips her own arms off yeah it's it, the, it's the, like the body that makes sense limit, limited basically yeah yeah and then it's like the tank itself will crush her skull and then that's it she can't operate that body anymore that's it yeah so it's like it makes a lot of sense in that sense but yeah that was a... I, I still love Batu just peering out of nowhere with a big fucking anti tank. <laughs> that was um, that was another scene that they completely fucking ruined in the live action. By the way, Uh it doesn't yeah. surprise me. Live yeah. action. The two the two scenes that they really really needed to get bang on. The land tank and the water fight. Fucked it. Completely <laughs> fucked it. Just went out God the window sake. completely. It was terrible, terrible. But um, yeah the. The land tank scene is amazing. Again, there is that sort of. I think she she knows that if it gets hold of her or shoots, like it's going to just annihilate her anyway. So she's still being careful in what she does. Yeah, but um, when she's taking cover behind the pillars and rolling around, yeah. she's not getting hit. Yeah, it's um very good, very good, very, very good, very nice, very good, very nice. Um. So yeah, overall, good film. I would recommend it. Yes. Yes. Right. Just the only thing I would say is cut it some slack because of how old it is. Yeah, give it. And a the animation style is different to compared to yeah. today's animes. Yeah, give it definitely give it a chance. If if you take like the first like five minutes of it and go, I don't think this is going to be for me. Give it a chance. Give it at least give it a watch and then share your opinion on it because it's it deserves it of because of its cult fucking status basically it's yeah it's just, uh, it just it deserves to be recognized as one of the best anime films out there like easily top top 10 potentially i'd say um <laughs> see i can't say top 10 cuz I think I've only watched ten. <laughs> <laughs> I I I'd say I put it up there among the best, but I wouldn't say it is the best. I think you can com think. comfortably say top twenty five, no problem. Yes. I pers personally I would go into the top ten. Um I think for me you'd have to like rank it by series of ten years. So if you do nineties to two thousands, yes. yeah, I'll put it in my top ten. That's the show. That's a good show. But if you spread it like 1990 to today, I'm sorry, there's loads of good a films. Harder, yeah, because it is, <laughs> it, because when you think like a film like that would come out every three, four years, say, you'd get a film of that calibre come out. Now we're getting films like that come out every six months, like genuinely. Ace and Point, Jujutsu yeah. Kaisen Zero, Demon Slayer. Exactly. My Hero Academia. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's three in one year. Yeah. Literally, or in the space of one year, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's um, it's insane. The the what I'm, what we're getting. I'm personally, but... I was gonna say, I'm personally happy that that's the case now. If yes. I'm honest with you, yeah, because at the end of the day, it's more entertainment value. Mm. I can't get enough of anime, so I'm not gonna <laughs> complain. <laughs> yeah, it's the same same for me. Um, I will just add a few general things. Uh, I thought that the 
score or the soundtrack in the film. It, it's iconic. The first, I said it. Said it's you that I think they used it for the Olympics. The, like, oh, the intro, sort of, like the sort of. I don't know how you describe it. It's like like sort of like a screaming girl or like a singing girl at the beginning. Yes. That... It's the same with Demon Slayer as well when they do their intro slash yeah. opening title scene. Yeah, so that is to me iconic number one, and it just adds it just adds to the creepiness and the mysteriousness of the film. Yeah, it, it adds to the suspense of it all. Yeah, but to be honest, it's the same with um, quite a few films back from that era as well. They yeah. tend to do that quite a lot. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's like feudal Japan kind of singing yeah, or it's, it's something str- along the yeah, line. Yeah, it's strange, but it, it works really well with it. Especially if it is an older style of singing with a newer style of film would be quite an interesting concept as well. Like, yes. Um, like it's like... Idea. A good example, I think, would be if you think of uh, Demon Slayer... Yeah, the Demon Slayer opening, the one I complained about to you because it starts off really, really good. Mm. I think it's the Muga. Is it Demon? Is it the Mugen Train it's one? It's Mugen Train's series soundtrack, not the film soundtrack. Yes. Yeah. It's like, I remember. I really love the opening start, but it's like it's kind of that kind of vibe. It starts off really well, and then it turns into like a creepy factor with like the weird old mm. traditional kind of singing. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's like. It's it's, it's kind of similar. Good. Yeah, it's good. Um. Also, I need to just add on. Uh definitely take notice of background in ghost in the show because i think yeah so when you we mentioned about like the city in the background and stuff yeah yeah. the obviously a lot of people are just gonna be watching animation be like yeah this is solid but Mm. i really like looking at the art style and the world building of films like that especially the 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 scene when she's i think they're on like a boat going up like a canal between the town and you're like you're getting like a bit. I think there's I think there's like a song playing. It's not like a a real major bit. It's like they're traveling, and I think yeah. I think is she, it when she comes back from diving? Or I think so. I think there's a bit where she looks up at a window, and there's a woman that looks exactly like her in the window. Yes, I know what you mean. And that's where she starts to sort of realize that she's not one of a kind. She's like a whole host of maybe like half a dozen of whatever, but. There's yeah. like the scene of where they're literally going up like what would I'd imagine be like an older style of Japan because it's like the slums, like you said. Yeah. Uh, and you get to see like all the world, and I think the I think there's also rain in that scene as well, and it just adds to it. It just makes it like it gives it a, such a good atmosphere. It's it's now something I would have loved to have seen, and forgive me if I have missed it. Oh. I would have loved to have seen a Tory Gate somewhere. There might be one in there. I'm just. I might have to have a look. There might be one in there. But what, a Tory Gate, what, like, just, down like, the canal would have been brilliant. Just to see if they're still standing. <laughs> I think they're... Yeah. I think it was... Because I, I believe the, the boat that they're on as well is like a steamboat, which is, again, an older style as well. It's like... It, it's... Which is also bizarre as well, because it's like, you still got... Back then, what was the latest kind of technology for boats? Was I don't think it was steamboats. It was further than steamboats, but... Yeah, so it's like... Some technology's gone back and some's gone yeah. forward. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, just it's, really it's odd. like the people in the slums are using what they can rather well, than... Well, what they can get hands on, yeah. yeah. So it's... It's interesting. Tori Gate. Let's see if there is a picture or something in there. I'm curious. Uh... No, I don't think there is. Oh, missed opportunity. Ah, but they did Either show. Way. It does show the the slums part, like where it's going up the 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 town. So, um, did you show good. neon um, signs as well, which is very consistent with some parts of Japan? Yes, that, yeah. that is also a nice touch. I just yeah, I the 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 world building. Yeah, I've literally got a picture of it. Yeah, like like you said, all the so it's not a steamboat. It is like a newer boat. Um, all right, okay. Like you said, the slums, you've got all the signs hanging across the water, going from a building to a building. Yeah, and it just, that's what I meant. Yeah, it just adds, it just adds to it. It's so good. There, there is, uh, do you know what? I think we should maybe link this video. Um, it is literally environmental shots 
if I'm oh, in the shop, Ghost in the Shell. from Ghost in the Shell 1995, um, we'll link that because it's exactly it's worth what a we're talking to have about. A look at. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's what we're talking about. It's it's no it's no animation. It's just the world building. So it's people walking. You're seeing the boat moving and so on and so forth. So mm. we'll um we'll link that in the description because that's really quite good. Yeah, fair enough. I'll save that. Yeah, um, that's pretty much all I'm. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I've got on. Yeah, I'm in the show. Pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you think we should give it a score? We can do it out of how many, though. Um, I suppose it should be ten, shouldn't it? Or should we? Or five or ten? We're going out of ten. Yeah, ten. Should we go ten? It's easier, isn't it? Yeah. We'll go ten, and we'll do point fives as well if you want to. <laughs> okay, we'll do point fives as well then. <laughs> <laughs> I would go. Oh, I'd go. Seven point five. Six point five. Okay. My opinion. Still solid. So on though. average, it would be a seven. <laughs> yeah, but it's still solid. Still solid. It's a good film. Yeah, yes. I wouldn't. I don't put it up there with the greats, but I put it up there mm. because I have the respect for it being as good animated as it is for its age, yeah. and its storytelling is quite good as well. Yes. So I'll put it up there. Yeah, I I agree with that. I completely agree with that. But I think that's us done. It is us done. Cool. Right. If you like the video, like and subscribe. Let's get more. And I want a fucking answer to the to the comment down below as well. Okay. Yeah. We also want like, is there any other films uh, or animated series that we should do these videos on? We're kind of we want more, don't we? What do you mean? We want. But if people have got right recommendations for us to watch stuff, maybe, yeah, just maybe, maybe, say, there's, maybe there's stuff that we both haven't seen. There's there is of, stuff we have we both haven't yeah. seen. But if it, it, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't even have to be a film. It could be like a season, you know, season one or a season two or something. Just let us know and we'll we'll watch it and then we'll give our impressions and our thoughts on it. Yes, we'll give us the recommendations down below in the comments. I don't mind. Mm. Yeah, I am happy to watch whatever within reason. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> don't send us hentai, please don't send us hentai. No, because Vossi's going to be reviewing that, not oh, me. Oh, yeah, I'll do that, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll do that, don't worry about it. I, I, I must be protected. I'm, despite the looks, I'm actually the older one, which is, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I must be protected, that's fucking stupid. It protects um, me. <laughs> yeah, like we said, uh, like and subscribe. Leave the comments to what we asked in this video and uh, we will see you in the next one. See you later.